I am very pleased to have the one and only Burr Ridge native, Kathy Richardson, with me today. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Hey, Bird, how you doing? Good to see you. You too, and it's been a while, as a matter of fact. You've been a busy last. Let's see, uh, you're going to be in town here at City Winery very shortly with the new band that you're in. I guess it's not that new anymore, Jefferson Starship. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been in the band 15 years now. So. Yeah, so it's not that new anymore. Yeah, no, I figured out like recently that I've been in this band like more than half my career at this point, so it's pretty wild. Yeah, you know, and I remember when you joined the band because I remember thinking that's a great move for Kathy because yeah. <laughs> you had done a bunch of stuff around town, including, and we'll get to this in a second, being Janis Joplin in a stage production. Talk about yeah. diving in at the deep end. Yeah, I know, just so so insane. I, I don't know where where I get the uh, gumption, but um, yeah, pretty pretty awesome to to you know to be standing you know sort of in the shoes of the two goddesses of rock, you know, Jan Joplin and Grace Slick, never in my wildest dreams uh, did I think any of that was ever going to happen. But, um, you know, I, I wanted to do what they did and they were definitely inspirations for me, but I didn't really mean like literally, you know. <laughs> right. I, have you had a chance to to meet Grace Slick, as a matter of fact? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've hung out with her a bit. She's really, really cool. Actually, years and years ago, before I was even anywhere near in the band, I met her at an art show in Maui. You know, she paints now. And, um, she, you know, I, I talked to her for quite a while. I had some friends with me, so they were kind of breaking the ice. Oh, this is our friend Kathy. She sings. Oh, really? Yeah. What what kind of music? I said rock, but I've been, you know, I've been doing this Janis Joplin play and she goes oh so you sing blues then you know and I'm like well yeah kind of and um she was really cool she started giving me all this advice uh about how to you know what you got to do is you got to get an entertainment attorney and then you do a showcase and all the labels come and then you get a record deal I'm like oh I wish I wish it was that easy for me but um it, anyway she was so cool and I wrote in my journal that night I met Grace Slick and I had this amazing conversation with her and I felt like it was so weird i felt like i was talking to a future like version of myself like that's exactly what i'm gonna be like when i'm you know when i get older <laughs> and uh really just it's just cosmic to end up in the band and get to now we've written a song um that's on our latest album mother of the sun yeah this is really cool um you know i was nominated for a grammy for my album my solo yeah. album the road to bliss for the packaging and i have a really spot in my heart for cd packaging because um you know it's i it felt like the music industry had really lost something with the yeah. artwork and vinyl now vinyl's back but anyway we developed this uh the space box and this actually like this is the album cover this thing folds down to to a cd box like and it conforms to the size of a of a CD and it folds up like this. So this is this, this is the box. And then it opens up and there's this really cool art everywhere. And the the um this is my actually my son, mother of the son, S U N, but that's my son Hendrix. Yes, he's named after Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> In the tradition of the band members' kids being on the covers of albums in Jefferson history. Um, Hendrix is on here with the, the Cassiopeia Nebula and that or that's or the constellation. The Nebula is here and it's in all of these different depictions of, you know, everyday life with space. And it's really cool. Um, this young artist named Nick. I can't remember his last name. You got to cut that part out. I have that to is fantastic. That. I have really not cool seen though. anybody do anything like that. That is fantastic. The space box. It's got. It's just filled with space inside. You see? Wow. That's kind of serendipity that you should meet her before the Jefferson Starship thing should come about. And, you know, yeah. to, that, to, to that end, you probably, you know, felt a little bit better about accepting that. Oh, I, I was like, are you kidding me? Yes. I, I was singing with Janice's band, Big Brother and the Holding Company at the time. And we went out on the uh, 40th anniversary of the Summer of Love tour. And so I was singing the Janice songs with Big Brother. And 
Jefferson Starship was the headliner. So they, you know, and, and Grace had nothing to do with the band anymore. She's been retired for 30 some years. Um, and so it was Paul Kantner, David Freiberg, um, sometimes Marty Ballin was there, mm -hmm. um, Donnie Baldwin on drums, and, um, you know, Chris Smith, our longtime keyboard player, and Slick Aguilar was on guitar at the time. Anyway, the point, and I have one, is that they all watched me sing with Big Brother, and um, their singer that had been in the band, Diana Mangano, for like 13 years, decided she didn't want to do it anymore um after that tour so i just happened to be in the right place at the right time because of janice because of being crazy enough to say yes to doing janice <laughs> you know uh so and i was like at no hesitation because jefferson starship has always been one of my favorite bands of all time uh, only, second only to heart as you know um so yeah that that was pretty awesome so paul kantner was the one who actually invited me to join the band and he came to my apartment and I was living in San Francisco and I got out a couple of guitars and I got out my pile of vinyl and I've all the airplane and starship stuff on vinyl from when I was a kid, you know, and, um, but I, I only gave him one album to sign and that was blows against the empire, his solo album, which I did to just completely ingratiate myself to him. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it, it worked. worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. I actually saw the band, I guess it probably was at a smaller showcase gig, and Kantner was still with us at the time, and it was a fantastic yeah. gig. And, you know, we know each other through mutual friends, but that's really the first time I had had a chance to see you perform live, and I went, wow, she's a great person, and she's great on stage, too. She's fantastic. Oh. <laughs> cool. Thank you. I remember that. That was at, uh, that was at what's that place called? It's a, like a, Reggie's, right? Reggie's. Yeah. It was Reggie's, and then uh, we ran into each other again at you know to 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 the blues end. We were both uh, sitting together at BBK. I think it was no, it was uh, Buddy Guy and Jeff uh -huh. Beck at Ravinia. Was it? I th see. I remember going to see Heart with you at the at, and Cheap Trick and Joan Jet. Wasn't that? Wasn't and that, that what it too? Was? <laughs> yeah. We keep running into each other. That's the thing. Yes, yes, we I keep know. running into each other. But I do remember certainly, uh, you know, the blues and uh, Buddy Guy yeah. and Jeff Beck. We we saw that together. Sat sat together because we have mutual friends and whatnot. So I'm yeah. very interested about you know City Winery is a very intimate sort of setting. Uh, you've yeah. been there. You've done some gigging there. What can we expect from Jefferson Starship in that kind of setting? we're going to just do what we just do what we do it's just in a smaller room. You know, uh, we love playing the small places and kind of doing little pop-up shows like this one was just at last minute. We we're on a little bus run. And, um, you know, I was trying to book a show for myself at city winery and they said they didn't have the date I was looking for, but would I have any interest in this October 16th? And I was like, wow, that might actually work for Jefferson starship. Let me get back to you. And so we made it happen. Um, and it's gonna, I'm so excited because, you know, obviously I love playing for the hometown crowd and City Winery has been a home venue for me for many years and with my own band. So it's fun to bring Jefferson Starship in there and, uh, you know, we're just gonna blow the roof off the place basically. <laughs> and for those that perhaps attended the uh, Drive Birthday concert, uh, that was yes. with Jefferson Starship in Boston. And who else was on the bill? I'm forgetting now. I think. I think it was just just us two was it bands. Just the two. I yeah. thought there was a third one for some reason. Yeah, but maybe uh, there was, but I don't know. I was just obsessed with you know what I was doing. I was so excited to be there for that show too. That was really really fun. Right at the Rosemont Theater. Yeah, and you know to play with Boston. What an incredible thing to see their whole production behind the scenes. We ended up doing another gig with them after that, like an arena in um, at, like somewhere one of the universities illinois state or something um a, a few days later so that was really cool you know there's 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 kind of an interesting sort of uh thread of continuum here janice joplin of course because she was from somewhere else but she actually recorded her first album here in chicago because she kind of got yes. trapped without money and needed money to get out of here and she recorded an album here so you end up doing yeah. that and then of course grace slick is from the area from evanston take us through how you ended up 
doing the Janis Joplin thing because that's an incredible way to kind of really begin the "Hi, I'm here" part of your 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 you know your yeah. career. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I always always covered Janis in my show. Like every single time I ever played, I feel like I played Bobby McGee or <laughs> Peace of My Heart or both. You know. So um, when the the show Love Janice came to town, they had um, it's it's a the play was called Love Janice and and it had two women portraying Janice and there was a speaking Janice that was played by an actor and then a singing Janice that was played by a singer because they couldn't figure out how to find somebody who could do both things and then do it eight shows a week. I mean it's just incredibly taxing just the singing, but to do half the other show and monologues. I mean it's so they devised this brilliant plan of splitting her into her two public and private personas. And so of course I, um, they, they had Beth Hart and um, Andrew Mitrovich from Austin, Texas, who they'd found down there singing Janice. So she's great. And then Beth Hart got her record deal and they were like, we're, you, you have to support this record. Can't do the show. So I, you know, <laughs> they start asking um, around because they did all the auditions and nobody came up. And so they start asking who, who in this town can do this? Allegedly, they asked um, Dennis DeYoung and Jim Peterick, and they both said my name. Um, Nick Miller from Jam Productions said my name. So they all, that's how I got the call. And it was really out of the blue. And I was like, oh, this is just a joke. Like I'm, I don't do, I'm not, I don't sound like Janice. I mean, I love her music and everything, but I don't really know that much about her. I'm not an actor. I'm not, I don't do impersonations. You know, I'm not, this is not my thing. And they said, well, just come down anyway. Cause you can meet Sam Andrew. That was her guitar player. And I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll go down there. I'll sing a song. They'll see I'm not right for it and they'll send me home. But I'm, I'll just go down so I can meet the, you know, meet Sam Andrew. And, um, you know, they I walk in and they're like, she looks like Beth. I think she'll fit in Beth's costumes. <laughs> 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 I think they were like, if she, fit, I mean, if she can sing it all, we're hiring her, you know. Because, I, I mean, it's weird. Beth and I, especially back then, looked more alike. My hair has gone completely white now, but... Um, anyways, so funny, I, I sing the song and they offered it to me on the spot. And then I said, I'm going to have to go home and think about it. And then I was at home thinking about it. And I remembered that I'd had this dream several months ago, which without rambling on and on, I believe it, at least it felt like I got a visit from Janice Joplin and this dream, she really wanted to meet me. Um, and I don't know, just the the end result of this meeting was I was totally drawn to her. I absolutely loved her. I loved her. She was like a spirit. And I, I, I didn't want it to end. And she said, I have to go, but let me, I, I want to tell you one more thing. And then she pulled out her like works and shot up, uh, you know, heroin presumably in front of me and said, never forget that there's a dark side. And then she left. And I remembered the dream and I, just started crying. I was like, Oh my God, I have to do this. Like I have to do this. So that's how I got into the play where I met Sam Andrew play led me out to San Francisco. Eventually um, big brother asked me to sing with them. I met Jefferson starship and here we are. Wow. Did uh, yeah. you know, when you were doing the, the, the Janis Joplin thing uh, and you had this this dream. Did you tell some of the other members of the band about this dream? Um, I can't I can't recall if I ever did. I might have. Yeah, you know, I mean, but it's it, almost it, so private. It's woo woo, you know. <laughs> it's so private. You may not have wanted to. That's why. Yeah, I'm no, I, I I've told the story before, but I I just you know, so I, I it's it's kind of amazing when I think about it. It was like one of the most real dreams I've ever had. Most realistic that yeah. felt like it was really real. And um, it was so random and out of the blue. I just didn't un even understand. It had no context in why this happened in my dream world, you know, <laughs> until later when the play came along and I was so like sort of resistant to doing it. And then I remembered that and I was like, wow, I mean, I, it, it, she picked me, you know, I feel like she came to meet me, to sh show me, uh, you know, how to 
get there. And it took me a few years. I first started it here in Chicago at the Royal George. Then we went out to Sag Harbor, New York um, for a summer run. And that led to us going to New York City for the off-Broadway run, which went almost two years. But in the middle of that, 9-11 happened, which was a nightmare. And um, so I, I did end up getting in a really, really dark place at the end of it and I felt like to this point where I was like at at the lowest I've ever felt the day I did my final show um and then I went home and I took a few months off and I came back the next summer and did like four months of summer and it was just a different a different experience you know I wonder to some degree you know you brought up the the dream I wonder if Janice was warning you about the dark side and you did kind of experience it and maybe what she had to say uh, maybe helped you and guided you through that where you know don't fall down just just work through it right yeah yeah totally and 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 how to get to that place I mean as a singer to Mm -hmm. get into that tap into that emotion and make it come out through your voice and I think that's what she did in such a singular way more more than anybody i could think of the the emotion and the pain in her voice was coming from a real place you know do you think having to portray these these strong female lead vocalists and and i mean strong in personality i mean strong in voice too yeah. what what kind of experience is there's some similarities going on there as far as having to portray them i'm sure you have to dig deep and get lots of rest yeah, yeah, you know, and I I feel like Janice was just much harder to for me vocally because I had to jump through a lot of hoops to make that sound mm-hmm. and um really affect my voice in that way and and where Grace is closer to my Grace's voice is closer to my voice, my natural voice with that clear cutting belting mm-hmm. thing. Um although she had the super fast vibrato which I don't have um But yeah, I think, um, I I absolutely, you know, and I grew up worshiping Ann Wilson is my absolute hero. So all those years of trying to sound like Ann Wilson really helped me to try to sound like Janice and Grace, although I don't go for a straight up impression either way. Um, It's nice to give the audience something that feels familiar to grab onto, you know, and, and still do it in my own way. But you know, I also sing Mickey Thomas songs and I sing Marty Ballin songs. So that's a whole other thing, you know. <laughs> well, you know, as somebody, you know, for for those that have not seen the show and you're thinking, well, I don't know, take it from somebody who has seen the show. And, you know, I think I have a fairly good judgment uh, scale here. This is fantastic. It is off the Richter scale. scale. So you've got to see <laughs> Kathy Richardson with Jefferson Starship and you get the chance to see them at uh, City Winery coming up on the 16th. And, of course, they'll be featuring some new stuff from their new album and, of course, all the classics you know and love. And uh, I really think you ought to go because you're missing out if you don't go and see Kathy Richardson and Jefferson Starship. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You know, just before we go, we always ask everybody uh, for some funny stories because I'm sure you've got plenty. First and foremost... Uh, last real job you had before you were able to give it up and go full time as a pro in the uh, show business world, because we all had those, those jobs just before. (laughs) Right. I think I was pretty much in the gas station business with my dad. Um, (laughs) I was doing all kinds of things. I fixed cars. Um, I, you know, I like did oil changes and tune-ups and tires and batteries and all that stuff. And then I was a cashier, then I became a manager and I hired and fired people. I did, I went to the bank and I did the deposit. So I was in the gas station business. <laughs> <laughs> so, but are you a bit of a gearhead to this day? No, I can't. I mean, I love old cars, but I don't, the new cars, I couldn't even, t- I opened my hood. I'm like, where, where's the engine? It's just like a <laughs> block of metal in here. I don't understand any of this. Favorite classic you know? car? Um. Oh, you know. It's probably the cliche 57 Chevy 
or, you know, or a 59 Cadillac. It's got to be you. pink. I'm with you on those. And a convertible, you know. <laughs> and, okay, and then one other question we like to ask everybody, because everybody has a funny story. Mark Farner told me a story about uh, somebody putting dance wax on the stage, and, you know, he likes to slide on yeah. his knees, right, with the guitar. Yeah. And didn't know that there was dance wax on the stage, so he started sliding and just kept sliding and slid <laughs> right off the stage in yeah. London, I think it was at Hyde Park, he said, in front of tens and tens of thousands of people and landed oh on God. his feet and just kept on with the show like he meant to do it. Incredible. <laughs> it's he, like the uh, the saucer in Christmas Vacation Yeah, he, with the non-nutritive cereal varnish. Any, uh, <laughs> any funny stories from, uh, from war stories uh, yeah, that you I have? Mean, I've, certainly, I've certainly fallen, you know, I... I this is pretty funny. I was, um, we were playing BB Kings in New York city, which is kind of a small club. And mm -hmm. Paul was there, David, you know, Paul was still alive. And I had on these platform heels and we were playing, um, this, you know, weird Paul thing that we never play anymore. It was like the threshold of fire or something. And I squat down at the front of the stage and I'm like, right with my mic, right in these guys faces. And they're all like, this guy's just filming me like this with his camera. And then I, I go to hit the snow and I stand up and I'm like, ah, and I'm thinking, I am amazing. I am a golden God. And then I just kept, I just ah, <laughs> fell on my back, uh, my legs straight up in the air. I knocked poor David into the drum set. I think he's still contused. Uh, you know, it was <laughs> really embarrassing, really embarrassing. And then and I, somebody I told has that, guy, that on film. Oh, I, I told a guy, you're giving me a copy of that, and then you're going to delete it. And he was so scared. He did. But I have it. It's it's pretty hilarious. Do you, do you <laughs> it's like all of a sudden I'm there, and then I'm not. And then you just see my legs with the platform <laughs> heels. <laughs> uh, yeah, the great disappearing act by yeah. Andy Richardson <laughs> on stage. Thank you. Good night, folks. This is my dramatic exit. Yeah. Just like that. And there's yeah. the legs and the shoes. That's hilarious. That's Kathy Richardson. Exit stage left. Even. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure and great to see you. And uh, best of luck and continued success with Jefferson Starship. It's been going for a while now. Thanks again. Yeah. Thanks so much, Bird. Take it easy. See you soon.